uh, is stopped for these road workers. So he stops behind that. And in fact, the motorcycle stopped behind him. Well, Toyota Priuses <laughs> are apparently a little jealous of this whole Tesla <laughs> thing. Because one came along at 50 miles an hour, whacked the bike out of the way, oh, man. slammed into the back of the Tesla, and drove it under the, the VW Touareg. I've got some photos here. Touareg. Touareg. Touareg, yes. Oh, my goodness. Here it is from behind. Here it is from the... Uh, oh from the uh, side. Pretty good photos. Uh, Steen's uh, been online answering a few questions about this and uh, has been very frank. Uh, six people went to the hospital. Oh my God. Um, they were treated and released in less than three hours. No real injuries out of all this. Oh man. Uh, Steen Lucky. wasn't hurt. Said his popped his neck a little bit. He thinks he ought to do a little more headrest work. There you go. Uh, but other <laughs> yeah, than that, that's a little whiplash. I'm very happy that Steen and, and the entire party were, were not injured right. badly. But that's not my interest in the uh, affair. As you know, I've been quite critical of Tesla's. Um, concept of building battery modules out of uh, 5,000 little bitty batteries little, yeah. and uh, that I consider it a safety hazard and, uh, and right. kind of uh, don't approve of the whole thing. Well, I may be wrong. Uh, and, at least in and, crash survivability. At, at least in <laughs> crash survivability. I still think the heat thing is a, is a problem as they age. But in this crash, um, they leaked a little cooling fluid out of the battery system. If you look at the photograph, the Touareg has its rear wheel mounted on top of the battery mm. module. It does. That's what's holding it up. Yeah. The battery module may have been what saves Steve's life. It worked as a roll bar. <laughs> right, it worked as a roll bar. And um, there was no signs of smoke flames or anything else, which I think nice. is a, uh, uh, a very encouraging right. sign. I'm told there have been eight Tesla destroyed out of about 800 they're claiming now shipped. Okay. And no fires and no smoke and no uh, particular uh, problems. The, uh, so I thought we'd show these uh, photographs and you can see that for safety, um, obviously, there's no gasoline leak here. No, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but tore up a Tesla. It's it's had it, and uh, it's covered by insurance. But it'll be six months before Tesla gets some replacement. Oh my goodness! And that's the uh, that's the problem with the low volume automobile manufacturer. Um, of course, we've talked about the um, 2009 J1772. Standard for um, plug-in for, for the couplers, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the as it turns out, this is kind of interesting. They uh, balloted on, on this this week. Um, I don't know how it came out. Um, they haven't released anything about it. If no, no one raises any objections, they think they'll have an approved standard in about ten weeks. Okay, good. Well, that's real interesting. It's the 2009 J1772. And they're not going to make it in not 2009. Make it in 2009. <laughs> but I think it is going to be approved. It brings up the question, what's the Chevy Volt going to use? Because yes. <laughs> a guy named uh, Jerry Kessel is um, actually an energy storage systems engineering specialist at General Motors. As it turns out, he's the chairman of the SAE J1772 oh. task force. Oh, okay. So if you're wondering what General Motors is going to use, I think the 1772 is a they've, pretty they've safe got a bet. little inside track. And <laughs> I've got some uh, photos here. Here's one of the plug itself. Here's one of the uh, plug General Motors is going to use. So I've got a couple of photographs here. One is uh, uh, showing their, the narrow one is their 120-volt AC home charge unit. All right. And the sort of round one is the 240 volt. 240, okay. Uh, that's going to be a 3.3 kilowatt charge unit. And um, nice. I think their battery packs 16 kilowatts. So Two you're, hours. you're probably looking at five hours. Yeah. They're saying less, but I guess that assumes that you never really use mm -hmm. the uh, 16K. But it's interesting to see how this goes. 
And you know, a lot of people are struggling with the, the, the batteries and the, the drive systems and so forth. There's a lot of little things that make a big difference. Absolutely. Now, yeah. for example, you have a Chevy Volt. And let's say you spring for the 240, and it, they're not hard to wire. This is uh, uh, kind of a myth in the, in the news and with the Mini E thing. I, I, I can wire them. I do my own. But a, a licensed electrician, it's a, it's 200 a bucks. Yeah. Certainly in a garage, it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, but so you have this thing there. Now you go to Grandma's house for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you charge the car? The connector on the car is a J1772. I don't think Grandma has one. She doesn't have one at all. <laughs> Not on her Uber? <laughs> so you're going to have to make some kind of goofy adapter right. to connect this J1772 coupler to a regular plug-in 120-volt right, source. Volt to be able to do this. Well, it's not really like an adapter. You see, the J1772 has um, a number of things in it. One of them is a uh, circuit in the car that tells the plug that the car's there. Right. It, it won't switch on power to the cable right. without that signal. Without the signal, right. Uh, the other one is the car, uh, kind of using the same circuit, detects the presence of the J1772 mm -hmm. cord, and you're supposed to interlock the car so it can't drive away with a cord with in it. a cord in it, yep. Um, so you have to have that. Beyond that, by changing the resistance value in the cord, the charger can tell what mode to go into, whether it has level one charging available, which is 120 volts AC, or a 248 AC level two charge capability, and, and adjust the charging to that. So it's okay. not merely a matter of wiring around this thing or making a little adapter right. um, that'll convert J1772 into this. It would be quite a little adapter with all that electronics all in that. it. Right. And it's not a great deal of electronics, but it's not going to be a cord with one on one end and one on the other. Um, so you get into these little sort of how do I live with this thing uh, deals all the time. In any event, he thinks it's going to be approved this week. <clears throat> They'll release the standard in about 10 weeks. Um, the connector itself, and I've got a photograph of that, is manufactured by a company um, named Yazaki. It's a Japanese uh, company. It's supposed to be good for 10,000 insertions and, and, um, and pulls, which is, I mean, it's, a, it's an issue. That's a lot, yeah. Um, you need something pretty sturdy. Um, and it's um, uh, supposed to be, it's 43 millimeter diameter uh, plug. It um, can carry 70 amps. Uh, on the plug, that's the max. Okay. Um, you know, the reason we talk about some of this is, yeah, uh, the Prius has a five kilowatt pack, the, the Volt has a 16. Uh, we had a 20, raise it to 24. 24, yeah. The batteries are changing. They are becoming less expensive. So on the Mini, we're picking between a 40 kilowatt pack, a kilowatt hour pack, and a 54. Mm -hmm. And we went with the 40, well, the Brusa charger takes 12 hours to charge it. A 3.3 kilowatt charge station like this takes 12 or 14 hours to charge a pack that size. Right. So right. big pack. Th this is getting out ahead of itself. This is almost going to be obsolete before it started. They don't have a DC charging standard, which is the way I'm going to go. We'll talk about that. Uh, a little bit in an upcoming uh, video segment about how to charge one of these large packs. But you have to consider, what if we had a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in yeah. 300 pounds? If your dreams could mm -hmm. come true that would... and they could sell you for 2,500 bucks, a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack that you could put in the trunk, how are you gonna charge it? Not very quickly. You can't charge a car for a week and drive it for a couple, <laughs> a couple of <laughs> that, That's not the way this is going right. to go. 
And so I've got some ideas about how to do that, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. Meanwhile, this plug, you had a buddy uh, in Yazaki who was uh, talking to you about that. What's his name? Uh, Mike uh, Rockefeller. And uh, he's there, uh, one of the senior managers of sales at uh, Yazaki. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked to him this morning? I actually emailed, got an email back real quick. Mike and I have been emailing a couple of times. And uh, the, they're saying that these plugs in prototype form may be available here pretty soon, like in November. Hmm. So uh, we've got a confirmation from Mike and a part number. Okay, and we can get, a, get a, some of these prototypes? It looks like we can get the prototypes. What do they want for them? Uh, it looks like